My name is Meryl Bernstein, and I live in unincorporated Thurston County. These containers are called TEUs, 20-foot equivalent units. They are used to transport cargo of all kinds, including the consumer products we buy at big box stores. The South Sound Logistics Center is a joint development project by the ports of Tacoma and Olympia. The 745-acre transportation hub would comprise a transload facility with hundreds of acres of warehousing for storing TEUs and other cargo, a classification yard for sorting, an intermodal facility for transferring cargo onto trucks and trains, an enormous parking area, train-related facilities such as service and switching yards, and possibly rail-related industry, among other things. Straight ahead is a Little Rock Maytown Highway exit, which is 10 miles south of Olympia. The interchange would be the main access route for thousands of trucks headed to the proposed South Sound Logistics Center. The property was purchased by the Port of Tacoma in the summer of 2006 and is situated in the middle of 3,000 plus acres of rural lands. That would be over 800 acres of rare prairie species and preserve owned by the Washington Department of Fish and Wildlife, known as West Rocky Prairie, over 1,300 acres of long-term undeveloped forest, and over 900 acres of state park lands. Traveling east from Interstate 5 down the two and a half mile stretch to the port's property through the small ruler town of Maytown is one of two rail lines that would serve the logistics center. This east-west track runs between Maytown homes and wetlands alongside and parallel to Maytown Road and continues into large wetland areas beyond. The second rail line is owned by BNSF and runs north-south through the rural and densely populated communities. The logistics center would increase train runs exponentially. Citizens have many concerns about undisclosed cargo and hazmat materials, a serious issue of public safety. As you can see, residents' houses are extremely close to the road. Driving out of Maytown a mile further is Miller Sylvania State Park's recent land acquisition, which will have a new access road directly off to the left here. The park's expansion will include a new campground and a larger environmental learning center. Recreationalists, naturalists, and campers will be competing with semis, service vehicles, and rail traffic, and along with local residents, will be subject to air, noise, and light pollution. 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Hi, my name is Laurel and Tony, and I live in Tenino. Millisylvania is part of the larger ecosystem tied into this Thurston County region and contains some of the only old growth remaining in the county. As on Rocky Prairie, delicate species live out their life cycle in an intact habitat. But Rocky Prairie species are more diverse because its ecosystems are more diverse. It contains about 300 acres of mounded prairie, 360 acres of wetlands and riparian systems, 40 acres of oak woodland, and 300 acres of mixed forest. Many endangered and threatened species have been documented on Rocky Prairie, as well as an incredible 45 of the 52 Thurston County butterfly species. The preserve has two salmon-bearing streams, Allen and Beaver Creeks. Impervious blacktop surfaces, stormwater runoff, spills and soil disruption will not only compromise stream life, the wetlands and the aquifers, but also the prairie and all of its inhabitants. Transportation hubs are known pollution magnets. A quote from the Department of Fish and Wildlife states, Rocky Prairie represents one of the last opportunities to protect a large piece of functioning prairie oak wetland landscape in the Puget Trough and is one of the only five remaining high quality examples of glacial outwatch prairie landscapes. Hi, my name is Sharon Kuntz. I live in Olympia, Washington. Roughly 70% of imported products received by Northwest ports are merely passing through. Their destinations are the Midwest and East Coast. This is how a busy port looks and sounds. Increased rail and truck traffic in Maytown means increased rail, truck, and ship traffic in Olympia. 
Much of the port of Olympia's 90-acre peninsula has been earmarked for logs and other cargo operations, with plans to build a $2 million in-yard rail system. Large operations require large shippers, and in this case, shippers of every sort. The question is, at what expense? We pose this question not to the project developers, but to local stakeholders of the community, those outside the usual business model, those who will suffer the impacts. That is the citizens, the long-standing community members, the environmentalists and scientists, the local businesses, and resident homeowners. Although Olympians are accustomed to seeing some log trucks coming and going, and the occasional short train rumble through downtown Olympia, if the proposed South Sound Logistics Center is developed in Maytown, and the proposed new market warehousing is built in Tumwater, warehousing hundreds of thousands of square feet in size, each would bring daily congestion, environmental consequences, and decreased quality of life not only to their respective areas, but also to all the corridors in between, including rail corridors. The implications are staggering and far-reaching, a complete transformation of our entire region, extending throughout all of Puget Sound.